fear of the people in Africa and the will to, to, to make something. This is very important to have this aspect. Um, sorry, but I must leave this show because I have the next meeting. Nice. But um, I hope that my expertise was interesting for the people of Africa. And uh, I'm every time very glad when I can participate on your show. But now I must leave because I have a meeting. And uh, But also in this meeting, we are talking about Africa. And so uh, I'm very happy to take part on your show. And uh, I hope that uh, we have more and more ideas to give perspectives for Africa. This is very important to me. Of course, uh, we are almost uh, rounding off for uh, Mr. Patrick, and I want to uh, appreciate your insight uh, on a topic for discussion uh, this day. Thank you for respecting this uh, rendezvous. And of course, let's uh, come back to you, Mr. Elijah uh, Enoko. We are looking at uh, the uh, existing institutions in Africa and how these uh, institutions, we cannot uh, actually undermine the African Union, but then uh, there have been so many controversies surrounding uh, the existence of the African Union. And you know, today we are talking about uh, the uh, Africa moving from uh, a supplier of raw material to a producer and looking at the feasibility of Africa's uh, transformation. And in your analysis, you actually pinpointed the, the, the major problems faced by the continent Africa. Let's analyze this last aspect before we go, the aspect of uh, diplomacy and of course the role of the African Union in trying to take Africa to the top and to, to boost its uh, production uh, capacity. You underlined earlier on Africa has what it takes, that is the raw material. And not just the raw materials, Africa has the market. You remember we in the preamble we highlighted uh, the available market of about 1.3 uh, uh, billion. And of course, uh, uh, looking at also uh, the manpower or the level. So in your perspective, what is the role of the African Union, uh, Africa's uh, diplomacy, and, and how can this actually boil uh, towards attaining an objective of boosting the Africa's production capacity. Very is good that you ask that question. <clears throat> because if you look at the regional integration in Africa, mm -hmm. it's a big problem. Because if the regional powers are not to be integrated by, by themselves, then you don't expect the African Union to be even integrated. Because the regional powers are all a mess. Look at what is happening with ECOWAS as we speak. Instead of ECOWAS trying to negotiate a peace agreement with Niger, they are actually trying to go to war. That tells you that regional powers are not actually serving the interests of the people. Because if you talk about transformation of raw, raw materials into semi-finished products, for example, you're talking about things like the Af African continental free trade area that we've talked about in your show. You're talking about creating a unified and harmonizing regulation because if you leave from one African country to the other, the terms on which Niger is trading on uranium with France, you will find it in the next African country that's trading on the same uranium with the United States, completely different. There's no unified regulation on what needs to be done in Africa. Because Africa can become a really attractive investment destination. If we gain a stronger negotiation position in the international community, we don't have that. We don't have that. The free trade is an area that is going to give some impetus into that, but we don't. We are not yet there. We have you and I have talked about that in this show for a very long time. But that's the path. We need to have strong institution and strong framework that is going to be like a standard for the Western world and the other organizations to deal with Africa and say. You know, I mentioned Paul Kagame because he made a statement to me. It might sound like a slogan as, as of now, mm -hmm. but it's a statement that if it's implemented all across Africa, and the rest of the people that are listening to me, if that is implemented across Africa, if, if every African country can sign on that agreement that he made, with that statement, he said at the conference, I think it was in Dubai, or I can't remember where he made that statement, he said, African country should sign and undertake 
that no raw materials leave Africa without at least being semi-finished. That every African country should have taken that. Every and every negotiation, every agreement, every bilateral agreement, every international agreement that they're going into with other international organizations, they should sign on undertaking that. No raw material leaves the soil of Africa as raw material. It must be either finished or semi-finished. Where does it come to? If they take undertaking and sign on a platform, or unity platform, and every other country that is coming to the continent of Africa to do business with any country in Africa knows that those are for which they are going to be signing any agreement. I'm telling you, they will, they will, they will, they will sit up. They will sit up. They will sit up. Look at, like we mentioned before, about the strength of Africa. We have from these other raw materials that we've talked about, like gold, coffee, coke, water. Africa also has natural resources like heat, energy. But in Africa, you will be short of, you know, I read a research paper recently, how days, how many hours, how many days of the year that African countries are in the dark because of electricity. But why can't we have power? When we have all the resources and the dust that can generate electricity that can be so good to you in Africa, we have the resources. Why not focusing on that? You focus on your strength and then you work on your weaknesses. Absolutely. That is the challenge that we're having in Africa. So these regional blocks do not have a strategy. I don't want to go into the issue of uh, the African Union being sponsored 63 percent of their resources coming from the western world they can get rid of that if they have the you know they put their house in order because we know that the european union sponsors the budget of the african union is 63 percent uh, uh sponsored by the european union mm -hmm. what about 30 something or 20 something comes from the african union but again these things sometimes you know we do talk against it but sometimes you look at their budget the budget is close to zero that's why they have to depend it on Western powers to sponsor the African Union. But it doesn't need to come to that. If these guys can put their house in order, have regional policies that take into consideration their strength, build on their strength. If you are producing rubber, if you're a country that's producing rubber, you build on that strength. Have strong negotiation uh, agreement with the, those partners. If you are a country that has uranium, like Niger and these other countries, you have a platform. If you are a country that's producing gold, you have a platform. How is it possible? How is it possible that a country like France, even the UK, that does not have any gold mine anywhere, they are almost the sixth and the seventh in terms of foreign gold reserves in their bank. And that's what's propping up their currency. But African countries, they are here, their own currency is pegged to France. Not only is it not pegged to France, their own, oh my goodness, it's a mess all over Africa. We need to put our house in order. As long as the house is in disorder, we are not going to get there. That's the problem. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah Enoko. Of course, there is need uh, to put order in a house. Uh, charity begins at uh, home and of course with all uh, the uh, perspectives uh, from various uh, uh, panel of experts uh, and of, of course uh, the fact that uh, the media in Africa has been intentional about uh, broadcasting uh, constructive programs or bringing forth constructive uh, debate programs uh, uh, that can change uh, the narratives across Africa, uh, change the African mindset and redefine uh, uh, perspectives uh, in a political, social, and economic perspectives in a bid to see that uh, the continent Africa stands uh, and occupies its position and also to have a strong voice when it comes to international negotiations. Uh, uh, leaders, uh, of course, should be intentional about ensuring uh, the uh, total integration, especially economic integration of Africa and of course uh, go with the philosophies of the fathers of Pan-Africanism who preach that together as a continent, together as one, Africa can be able uh, to stand firm 
as a strong economic priority. And I think the African continental free trade area is a good example of such a, a tool that African uh, leaders of today can capitalize on to be able uh, to take Africa to the top. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Elijah Inoko and uh, Mr. Patrick Bell for the uh, great analysis uh, on our topic for discussion this day. And of course, uh, for those who participated by leaving their uh, messages on our Facebook page, I want to thank you for your insight. And of course, I acknowledge uh, the uh, technical crew for ensuring that the program was a success. Uh, thank you for trusting the Pan-African Television. Uh, we've come to the end.